Thing. Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! This is the last Sunday politics before Parliament breaks up for the summer recess next week. Most MPs could definitely do with some time away. But when they come back in September, both the Conservatives and Labour face big questions over how to win an overall majority whenever the next election comes. We'll talk about that in a moment, but first let's have a look at what's been happening to Theresa May and Jeremy Corbyn since June the 8th. And what we're saying is the Conservatives are the largest party. Note they don't have an overall majority at this stage. She who dares doesn't always win. Now let's get to work. The party that is lost in this election is the Conservative Party. The arguments the Conservative Party put forward in this election have lost. I think we need a change. That's not quite true. That Labour is the party that lost. The government failed. And her coming over here trying to speak to, to who? Who do you want to speak to? You know, you had your chance. Now everyone's going to be angry and, and, and go crazy. No. Build bridges, not walls. I think the public will rightly want us to get the broadest possible consensus in looking at those issues. The government is apparently now asking other parties for their policy ideas. And so, if the Prime Minister would like it, I'm very happy to furnish her with a copy of our election manifesto. Barnier? Barnier? You're now playing for Arsenal. <laughs> the comments we were getting back from a lot of people that, that were being passed on to me were that we were going to get a better result than we did. Devastated enough to shed a tear? Um, to, uh, yes, a little tear. Yes. At yes. that moment, that at that moment. At that moment, yes. It's been a packed time. Let's start with Mrs uh, May, Tom. The, another day, uh, another leadership rumour challenge. She's tired, she wants to fight on, she doesn't. Is this all just Westminster scuttlebutt or is it corrosive to her leadership? Hugely corrosive. I think, it's, I think it actually can be both. My estimation mm. of what's really going on in the party and the, the, the MPs, in, in Tory MPs in Westminster, is uh, the vast majority, and by that I mean probably around about 300, don't want a contest. They want her to stay to finish Brexit, see it through 2019, simply because of the incredible Pandora's box that so would open. Who's building all these column inches in the papers? Well, about three cabinet ministers, possibly four. I could identify all of them on air, but it would be slightly wrong because they would stop talking to the likes of me forevermore. Oh, but oh, they are God. giant, well, you can probably guess, they are giant egos. They've been at this for several years, if not decades, and they are very keen indeed to manoeuvre themselves. Uh, this is their shot to, to be leader or to move themselves in the position to be the, the so leader of they put their own interests, because most Tories I speak to they think the risk of another leadership election is horrendous for them because they fear it could lead to a general election yeah. and they would lose. But they, the ones you're talking about, they put their own self-interest above the interests of their party. Without a doubt, simply because they are a funny bunch, this lot. We know them all very well, <laughs> but they are simply incapable of putting uh, their own interests underneath those of the country. And the, the problem, I think, for Mrs May is this is not going to stop, no matter what the 300 Tory MPs below her uh, want. They're going to carry on doing this, I think, unless she actually said something about her own leadership and conferences the times that she needs to spell out a timetable for herself, when she's going to stay and when she's going to go, rarely to actually buy her that authority to, to hang on. I mean, she but, almost did that, didn't she, in her interview with you, you know, very indicating... Close. Very close. I mean, I think there's another thing to point out here. I agree with almost everything that Tom has said, but those in, on the back benches who don't want a leadership contest now, it's not purely for the good of the country. There's some self-interest going on there too, and that is because there are a good number of them who 
are eyeing up the top job themselves and they believe that they need the two yeah. years or the year and a half to actually build well, up the following to have a credible tilt at it. My view is that people like Boris Johnson for his reasons and Amber Rudd for her reasons think they stand a better chance once Brexit is done of becoming leader at the moment. Mr Johnson too toxic with the Remainers, Amber Rudd too toxic mm -hmm. for the Leavers. If, the, if it's all done and dusted, then they cease to become so important. So you're quite right, they have self-interest too. <clears throat> Last time Mrs May went walking in the hills, it was Wales, she came back and called an election. She's about to go walking in the Swiss mountains, I understand, uh, in the weeks ahead for a break. Is there any chance, any chance she comes back and says, I can't, can't, I'm not going on with this? No, because uh, although I think, being a human being, she will be deeply traumatised by mm. what's happened, and it will probably hit her more intensely when she moves away for a few mm. days from the cocoon drama of the whole which situation. Which just kind of keeps you going. Which ke you just have to keep going, and then she'll be walking, and she'll think, what have I done? Um, but she's clearly trying to hold on, and she's built up a new number 10, almost an entire new personnel in there. She's brought Damien Green in as, as a deputy. So there's no sign that she plans to go in the short term. But leadership is partly about casting a spell over all of us and her ministers. The fact that all the ministers, even with Tom's interview where she was sort of being robust in saying two years, know that she's not going to fight the next election means part of the spell is gone. I remember when Tony Blair gave a timetable mm. for his departure. You could feel the power oozing away from him from the moment he said it. Now, I know she hasn't formalised it, mm. but the fact that that assumption is there means I think all this feverish speculation is just going to carry on and on until she goes. Let me come on to Mr Corbyn now, uh, who would seem to be in a much better position the, uh, post the election. What, what does he now do, though? Because if, if he cannot provoke an election quite quickly, you never know how long your day in the sun is going to be. Um, but he does have a mission, or he and the people around him, they're going to, they want to take control of those parts of the Labour Party if they don't already take control, and they'll probably do it. Absolutely. So, Jeremy Corbyn, in the last two months, has established he is a very good campaigner. Indeed. Full stop. Everybody now agrees on that. Just look at that clip there. He now dresses in a white shirt, a dark suit. He actually looks, you know, I wouldn't quite say prime ministerial, but like he is able to lead possibly even a whole country. He also so seems comfortable in his own skin. He, he does seem comfortable in this, but the entire thing is, is built still on protests. Uh, there, mm -hmm. there isn't really a fully established alternative policy set up there where he is ready to take over the government if this election ever comes. I don't think it will. So the challenge for him is to turn the, 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 the huge generation of support he's got over protest into the ability to govern. You just heard from Rebecca Long-Bailey there on Brexit alone. The Labour Party now admitting their entire Brexit policy is cake and eat it, a, la, a la Boris Johnson. Okay. That is not electorally We've only got about that, Steve. I'll come to you now for a final word from uh, Isabel. The fact is that Mr Corbyn has been a transformative figure for the Labour Party because unlike when Michael Foote went, it eventually this went back to normal. Even when he goes, it's not going back to normal. It's transformative for the Labour Party, it's transformative for the country. I disagree with Tom. Uh, they put together a more detailed programme than the Conservatives mm. uh, at, at the election. And they cost it. And, and they, they, they costed it to some extent. I think to be uh, facing two ways on Brexit is the only place for a leader of the opposition to be, and he's been quite <laughs> smart on that. Oh. Oh, Tony Blair, that. when he was a leader, faced two ways on the single currency mm. outside Parliament, he's now saying be more robust, but as a leader of a party divided over this issue, he's played it very smartly in my view. Final thought from you, Isabel, and Mr. Cromwell. Well, all I would say on Tony Blair is let's keep it for Brexiteers. We want more Tony Blair saying it can't happen. That is just good for the cause. You, you think <laughs> that he's such a toxic more, figure now I that absolutely whatever do. side he supports yeah, absolutely. damages that side? Absolutely, yes. His arguments are pretty good, but as a leader of an opposition party, you can't advance them at He's this point. He's doing great things to Jeremy Corbyn's leadership, that's for sure, every time he pops up. <laughs> yes. All right. Well, we're going to have to leave it there. Enjoy your summer. And you. Which is coming up now for us, because that's it for today.